the AUR or Arch user repository is an incredible resource on Arch. It allows things to be packaged like random obscure printer drivers, terminal applications that nobody has heard of, and even Wayland compositors like Hyperland by the community and unlike something like PPAs, available in one central location. But sometimes, packages that are really popular like say, the Hyperland package, like the LF package, get removed from the AUR. But they're not removed from the AUR because they're bad packages, they're removed because they're moved into another repo, in this case being in community. But in rare cases, you might see them in extra. But who decides what gets moved out of the AUR and made into an official package? Well, the short answer is people like Caleb McLennan and George Rawlinson, but that doesn't really explain much, and there's a lot more to the story. The first thing we need to understand is the purpose of each of the Arch repos. So let's start off simple with the core repos. As the name might suggest, this contains the absolute core of Arch Linux. What you need for booting your distro, your Arch Linux kernel, your bootloader, your init system, all of your general system management tools, what you need for connecting to the internet, building packages, managing your file system, your GNU core utils, and any of the dependencies needed for these various packages. What this doesn't include, because it is not necessary whatsoever, is GUI software. It is just what you need to get the system working. Now, a lot of that extra stuff is included in the extra repos. This includes the major packages you're probably going to install, but they're not required to make the system work. This includes things like your Xorg server, your major desktop environments like GNOME and KDE, your web browser, your media players, your major language support like Python and Rust and things like that, your terminal, your text editor, word processors and things like this. Now there are also a bunch of other repos like testing, community testing, multi-lib, and things like that, but they're not really that important for today. Now, the third major repo, and the one we're mainly going to be focused on, is the community repo. And packages in the community repo are packages from the community. And on Arch Linux, those are packages pulled from the AUR. Now, technically, elevated AUR packages can be moved into extra, and on hyper rare occasions moved into core, but for that to happen, they have to be considered absolutely fundamental to the way that you're using Arch Linux. The vast majority end up just being in community. Now, let's find out how things are picked to be moved. If we go over to the AUR web interface and just pick a random package, let's say Google Chrome, for example, you're going to notice two values the votes, and the popularity. Now, votes are fairly self-explanatory. If we go to that package, you're going to notice there is the option over here to vote for this package. That's basically just saying, I like this package, I like what it does, and I think more people should know about it. But the problem with votes is once they've been made, the vote has always been made. So right now we're sorting by popularity. If instead we sort by votes, the biggest package on here is going to be Dropbox with 2300. The much more interesting number and the one that is actually considered is the popularity. This is based on the votes, but not by itself. This is a sum of all the votes where each vote is weighted at a factor of 0.98 per day since it was made. In simpler terms, the older a vote is, the less the vote is worth. So when you have a really old package like Dropbox, for example, it is going to have a lot of votes. But those votes aren't being made in quick succession, so it drops further down in the popularity. Whereas something like, say, Octopi, like Yay, like Visual Studio Code Bin, like Peru, these don't have as many votes, but they're getting the votes in a much more frequent fashion, meaning the package is a far more popular package. This is not a perfect solution and nobody involved in Arch thinks that, but it seems like the best they could come up with. 
the main purpose of the popularity field is to give very popular newcomers a chance to appear on the front page. Also, we don't care about packages that were very popular a year ago and are no longer used today. If a package is still interesting, it will continuously receive new votes, such as in the case of Yowit. Keep in mind this is an email from 2015. Nowadays, um, nobody uses Yowit. So, this popularity value is one of the major factors used to decide what happens with a package. But it's not the only factor, because if it was, Octopi, Yay, Visual Studio, Peru, Spotify, and a ton of other packages would have been in the community repos long ago. This is only used as a guidepost for a group of users called the trusted users. If you want to see a full list of the current trusted users, they are listed over on the Arch Linux website. This is a team of maintainers who, one, maintain the AUR. So if you go and say report a package as malware or whatever, they are the people that go and look at that package and say, okay, it's malware, it's not malware, what do we do with this? Or if a package is out of date and nobody's maintaining it, they decide whether that package is going to be removed. Basically, they're the AUR moderators but also they act as a bridge between the AUR and the official Arch repos. These trusted users are the ones who decide which packages should be adopted. And the popularity gives an indication of, you know, the popularity of a package. So it is used as a factor to decide if that package should be moved into community. But every single package is available for adoption. So if one of the trusted users says, hey, I really like this random whaling compositor that nobody else is using, they could decide to go and maintain that package. They probably just wouldn't because they want to bring things into the community repos that people are going to be using. So considering how much power these trusted users have, that raises the question. How does one become a trusted user? Luckily, it's not really that difficult. The minimum requirements are, you know, a basic amount of shell scripting, enough to be able to maintain an AUR package, nothing that crazy. You maintain at least a few AUR packages with high quality package builds. You have some level of general Arch community involvement, you know, like getting involved in the forums, possibly involved in bug trackers and things like that. You understand how to use a search engine and know how to work out problems for yourself and have an idea of what packages you're interested in maintaining. But while that's the minimum, if that's all you can do, you probably won't be voted in unless they desperately need people. If you actually want to do it, you should be actively involved in the Arch Linux bug tracker, written some patches for Arch Linux, and have some involvement in open source projects of your own. If you can manage all of that, then you can move on to the next step. You need to find two existing trusted users who are willing to vouch for you. This is basically to ensure they don't just get random applications from people who have no idea what they're doing. This is a big part of the reason why you need to get involved with the Arch community and find out what other people are doing, make connections and things like that. And if for whatever reason, one of the people you try to contact doesn't wish to vouch for you, this should be mentioned to the other people you are trying to contact. So once all of this is arranged, then you can send your application into the AUR general mailing list. When this is done, then your application will be voted on under the rules of the standard voting procedure. I'm not going to read it here. If you want to go and do so, go ahead and do so. Basically, the people who are there are going to vote on you and they will decide what your fate is. And one last thing, there are also cases where packages can go from some of the higher repos back down into the AUR. This will happen if, say, a trusted user or another maintainer doesn't want to maintain a package anymore and nobody else wants to maintain it. In that case, there's not much that can be done with it and the package will be removed. When this happens, usually somebody else is gonna start maintaining that package because usually if there's at least a couple of users, someone will do so, but usually this doesn't happen and for anything remotely popular, someone else is gonna come along to maintain it. 
So let me know. Did you know how this process worked? Are you a trusted user and you do this on a day-to-day -day basis? Or are you someone else who just happens to be interested in what Arch is doing? Maybe you don't even use Arch and you're a Fedora Silver Blue user. I would love to know. So if you like this video and go and like the video. You really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here. Check out the Patreon, Scribe, Stully, Barapay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And in case you couldn't tell, I don't actually think about these outros.